So I'm working from home. So a dear sweet friend of mine said to me recently, when was the last time you did a video? And I was like, that wasn't that long ago. It should have been only, and I looked at the, the last upload date and I was just like, it's the kind of nightmare you get when you're working from home. All the days kind of blur together. The uh, wake up, move three feet, get on the computer, work, get off, stay within the confines, go back to sleep, lather, rinse, repeat. The only differentiation you have between work days and regular days are the fact that on regular days you get to don a hazmat suit so you can go get provisions for the tribe. And then sometimes you just get things to stock up just in case because everybody else loses their damn mind. You should see how many toilet paper rolls I have. I have six, unlike some of you greedy mother You know what I would rather be doing? I have been saving up a little money for a tattoo I've been wanting to get. And thanks to my brother Josh from Just Josh Draws, he was able to help my concept come to life. Check it out. Now, since I can't actually get the tattoo on me, I am going to do the next best thing and I'm going to show you how I'm going to put the tattoo on me using the satanic powers of Photoshop. Intro. Hey everybody, this is Ed from Dodging Karma Design, where designs become graphic, where we discuss everything from photography to Photoshop. As I stated in the world's longest intro, I'm going to show you how to put a tattoo on you and make it look real. Now in this video, I'm just going to do the basics on how to put a tattoo on someone. Let's have a photo shoot. So what I want to do is I want to get the tattoo right here on my forearm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that picture where I was kind of standing up. I already corrected it in camera raw and I am going to go ahead and start to apply the image. First we have to prep the actual art file. This is 3840 by 1920. This is going to be 4K and we're going to put the piece of artwork here. So we know obviously it's not going to be this big. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the layer, mark it tat, and we're going to right click and we're going to make it a convert to a smart object. Then simply control T, which will give us our box. And what I like to do is I literally have to take the H in height and just drag it because it's all constrained to itself with keeping the aspect ratio. Now we're going to take this image and put it onto the canvas. What I do is you hit shift, click and drag to the canvas you want it to be on and it will center it. So this is top dead center. Again, we're gonna just convert to a smart object just because I'm hyper paranoid. Control T, right there. It's like the headless horseman. Let's make the background of the canvas black, which since black is actually our foreground color, I'm gonna hit Alt Delete and make the background black. Now it's time to bring the magic all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the tat and we're gonna move it above layer one and we're going to see that it's uh, big and white boxed. So we're just gonna zoom in just a little bit. Now, if you look closer here, you'll see that this is actually blue. I don't want it blue, I want it black. We're gonna go down here to our adjustment layers and we're gonna click on black and white. And since the colors in here were originally blue, I'm gonna take all the blue and mark it real dark. Kind of scrub out a little bit. I'm on the zoom tool. You can get to the zoom tool by hitting Z. You'll see the icon of a magnifying glass and it has the plus symbol. If you click on it and drag to the left, the whole thing gets smaller and you click and drag to the right and everything gets bigger. So we're gonna drag to the left. And wait a second, I accidentally made the entire image black and white, which is still cool. It's stylized, but we're not going for that. What we're gonna do is go to the black and white adjustment layer hit alt and kind of hover between these two. I want this to only affect this layer. So we're gonna hover over it and when you click it, it will clip that to this. You're almost done. We just gotta get rid of the white. We just go to the blending mode on the tat. So you hit the tat layer and then we go to the drop down. We go down to multiply. And what multiply is gonna do is it's gonna get rid of all the white. 
So now it looks pretty good. I think it's pretty awesome. Now all we have to do is make it fit. So we can do that by following the angle of my arm. We can actually take it and skew it just a little bit by taking this center node and kind of skewing the bottom part of it just a little bit. Just want to check where it goes out of bounds. See where it goes out of bounds right here? Not an issue. What we got to do is we just simply got to take, let's say, the lasso tool. Before we start clicking, see it says feather. It's going to feather it by, uh, let's say, 5 pixels, 5.4. Let's just see what that looks like. And what that'll do is it'll make a softer edge. So right now these look like sharp lines, but when I connect, double click and connect them all, you'll see they're kind of rounded. So go into the tat layer, scroll down to the icon for masking, click on it, and now you'll notice everything except that went away, which isn't exactly what we wanted. What we want to do is the opposite. So in order to do the opposite, we go here, to the actual mask, hit control I. It's not quite the best, so we can actually just take a soft brush by hitting B and making it small, by hitting shift and left bracket, making it softer, and then just kind of painting it in. Okay, that's a good start. We're almost in the home stretch. So now that we have that there, it looks terrible. But why does it look terrible? It looks terrible because it looks too sharp. It looks too, clean it does look like somebody just popped a piece of art on somebody and it just doesn't have any realism so now that we're here we have to realize that that is just way too dark i mean if you look from afar it just doesn't look real so what we have to do is just lower the fill a little bit now we just click on the layer go down to blend ifs this is what you want to focus on and we're going to click on underlying layer. Now what's going to tell Photoshop is this underlying layer has pixels on it that I want to blend or push through the layer above it, which would be the artwork. So the underlying layer would be, let's go with the light side and I want to drag it up and you'll start to see it's starting to fade right here at the highest part of my arm, the brightest part of this area. Like this is the darker part. If I push it in, you'll see how it's starting to pull up on that end. These triangles have a little line in the middle and you would think that'd be for accuracy, but it's actually to split the slider. What we're gonna do is first, we're gonna start moving the slider until we start to see any kind of activity, like right there. If you look over here in the lettering, the wording starts to break up right there. So just wanna go a step before that. And then we wanna hit Alt and split the slider. May take the left side of that slider, start pulling it back a little bit. And now you'll see if you go all the way, it'll just look like it's faded but you just want to keep it a little bit, maybe right about there, because subtlety is the trick. Then we can go down to do it the same way here on this side, because that looks too much. Start dragging until it starts disappearing. Look over here. Up, oh, there we go. Pull back a little bit. Split the slider, grab the right side, pull it to the right. And there we go. Yeah, that's not bad. That's starting to, that's starting to look a little bit better. It's starting to look a little bit more realistic. Now we'll slide in here. And now we're gonna do the thing that you have to do in order to make it look realistic, which is gonna seem counterintuitive completely. We have to blur it. We have to make all these crisp, sharp lines look like they're actually in skin. So we're gonna take this, go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur and not that much. I'm actually at 6.5 pixels and it looks like hell. And now the last step, you just wanna lower the opacity. Yes, we lowered the fill, but the fill actually reacts differently to the underlying layers than opacity does. And now it looks like I have a tattoo on my arm. Of course, you can make it darker, you can play with it, you know, you can really, I'm kinda of slapping this together and you can, figure out what works best for you, change the blend ifs, and that's why we wanted to do it as a smart object because all of these options are still with us. They're not gone into the ether. And that is basically how you add a tattoo to an image. If you want to actually like make it go around an object or make it kind of conform to the contour of an object, then that is a different technique. And I will be gladly show you in part two of how to make tattoos more realistic if you want me to make a part two. If you do, make sure you comment down below. 
This is an awesome technique if you're interested in getting a tattoo, but you're not really sure what it's going to look like. Like, you're, for you, that's going to be like, oh, this is going to be a badass tattoo. But you're also like, but I don't know if I really want to have that on me. And what's it going to look like from other people's point of view? So you can actually see what it looks like before you even get it on. Because remember, tattoos, just like herpes, are forever. And that's why I don't make slogans. So if you learned something, like the content, or I just made you laugh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and crotch punch that bell so you'll be notified each and every time I have an upload. Be sure to give me a like, and remember, whether you're getting a tattoo in real life or in Photoshop, be sure to be good. Be good or good at it. There we go. <laughs> dot com. This is Ed speaking. How can I help you? I would be delighted to. Let's start that right now.